All right, biologists, this is cell structure, theme A, unity and diversity. We are not going to talk about uh, microscope stuff. Microscope stuff is in a different video. You can click up here and check it out. Now, cells are the basic structural unit of all living organisms. This is known as the cell theory. It has three foundations. One, all living organisms are made of one or more cells. Two, cells are the smallest units of life. That means below anything smaller than a cell. That means an organelle or any other cellular component. It is not alive. Only the assemble, assemblage of these components forming a cell. That is the smallest thing we can call alive. Smaller than that, it's not alive. A lot of people say, oh, what about, uh, I don't know, the, is the endoplasmic reticulum alive? Or what does the ribosome want? Uh, uh, does heating a protein will kill an enzyme? It doesn't kill the enzyme because the enzyme is not alive. Enzyme is a protein, right? So it's smaller than a cell. It is not alive. Cells are the smallest units of life. And three cells come from pre-existing cells, right? Only through cell division, you have more cells. This relates to abiogenic versus biogenic hypothesis of life origin. And this takes us to the question of where did the first cell come from? And because this is a higher level topic, we are not going to discuss it in this video. Structures common to cells in all living organisms. This is the unity part. So we have many different types of organisms with many different types of cells, and they can be quite different from each other, but all cells have these three things in common. No matter if they're prokaryotic, eukaryotic, you name it, they all have these three things. A cell membrane, the cytoplasm filling up the cell, and DNA. Cell membrane is super important because without a membrane to separate the external from the internal, internal environment, how can you tell first where the cell is? got to limit where the cell is. And second, the cell membrane creates this internal environment that can be different from the exterior environment. You can have a different, different chemical environment, different reactions happening inside the cell, separating it from the rest of the universe. Cytoplasm is where all of these reactions happen. It is this specific, special internal environment. And DNA is the genetic material. And the fact that all organisms have DNA points to a common ancestor for all living organisms that also had DNA. And this trait was passed on to all living organisms that still exist today. Let's take a closer look at the prokaryote cell structure. Prokaryotes will have, as always, a cell membrane, cytoplasm, and DNA. Now, besides that, it, they have a cell wall. So this first membrane here, this is the cell membrane. And here, thicker, we have the cell wall. And this cell wall is made of glycoprotein, of peptidoglycan. It is different from eukaryotic cell walls. We have DNA, of course, in a loop. That means it is circular DNA. It's not linear chromosome like our chromosomes, like eukaryotic chromosomes. Prokaryotes have circular chromosomes. And it is naked, means it is not associated to proteins. This is the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Eukaryotes have protein associated with their DNA. Prokaryotes do not. It's just DNA, so we call it naked. It's right here, right? This is the circular chromosome of prokaryotes. They have ribosomes right there. Look at the ribosomes, all those ribosomes. And we call it 70S ribosome, and it has to do with precipitation rate. I'm not going to go into detail, but it means, in the end, size. Prokaryotes have 70S ribosomes. Eukaryotes have larger 80S ribosomes. So prokaryote ribosomes are slightly smaller and they are called 70S ribosome. Lastly, not shown in the image, there are plasmids. Plasmids are even smaller pieces of DNA, which are also circular and they can be shared. Prokaryotes can share this small piece of DNA so they can transfer genes between each other.
The pillars shown here as many shorter hair-like structures can be used to share plasmid. There's a special type of pillars called the F pillars that is used as a sort of cable connecting two bacteria so they can share a plasmid. Eukaryotic cell structure, there are so many organelles, we are not going to mention them all here in detail. Instead, you can go to this other video up here and check out the structure of an animal cell in more detail. But eukaryotic cells have plasma membrane, of course they do. They have a compartmentalized cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm, the space inside the cell, has compartments, has organelles with membranes. And these organelles are mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, both smooth and rough, Golgi apparatus full of vesicles surrounding it, and special vesicles such as lysosome and peroxisome and other forms of somes. Not shown in the image is the cytoskeleton, which is a group of proteins that is responsible for keeping the shape of the cell, but also as roads on which vesicles can travel. Eukaryotic has its name because it has a real nucleus, karyon in ancient Greek was nucleus, so eukaryotic means the one with the real nucleus. And this nucleus has a double membrane. And this double membrane has pores, large pores. As we mentioned, eukaryotic DNA is associated with proteins. These proteins are called histones. And if you take higher level, you can learn more about histones and nucleosome in this video up here. And as we also mentioned, eukaryotes have ADS ribosome instead of the prokaryote 70S ribosome. Quick mention, the processes of life in unicellular organisms. So unicellular organisms are organisms made entirely of only one cell. That means this one cell has to carry out all the processes of life. And to memorize them, we have the pneumonic Mr. Gren stands for metabolism and homeostasis. That means all the reactions, chemical reactions, catalyzed by enzymes and the processes to maintain life itself, to maintain the internal environment. Reproduction, making more of itself. Sensitivity and response, which means to perceive change in the environment, both external and internal, and to respond to these changes. Growth. Respiration, which means to obtain energy from organic compounds. Excretion, to remove waste. And the nutrition, to acquire more molecules to make all these other processes possible. All right, so let's compare here and contrast eukaryotic cell structures between animals, fungi, and plants. Animals, we do not have cell walls. Fungi do, and it's made of chitin, and plants also do, and it's made of cellulose. Animals and fungi have vesicles rather than proper vacuole. Plants have a permanent sap vacuole, a large structure, sometimes surprisingly large for the size of the cell. Animals and plants do not have plastid. Plants have chloroplast, amyloplast, other sorts of plasts. I'm just going to mark it as a yes, they do. Centrioles are structures that help in cell division. They generate the metotic spindle and pull the chromosomes apart in animal cells, but not in fungi or most plants. There are some, a few plants who have them, but for our purpose here, we just say plants do not have them. Animal cells may have cilia or flagella, while fungi do not. And again, most plant cells do not, but I can think of two examples of cell uh, of plant cells that have flagella, but for our purpose here, we just say they do not. All right, so let's take a look now at atypical cell structures in eukaryotes, starting with aseptate fungal hyphae. Aseptate means it doesn't have septa, the plural of septum. So septum would be like a barrier here between the cells. They have a cell membrane and cell wall. 
and acetate fungi do not have anything. So essentially, all these cells are actually just one cell because there's free movement here. There's no barriers. It's, it's just one continuous thing, but with many nuclei. So it is a typical in the sense that it's basically one large cell but with many nuclei. Instead of having one nucleus for one cell, it has many nuclei for this large, basically one cell structure. So this is what they look like. So cute. Skeletal muscle cells also have many nuclei, different reasons, but it's basically just one fiber is just one cell. So you have a very, very long muscle cell with many nuclei. And you can see them here in purple, it's one long cell, but many nuclei per cell. On the other hand, red blood cells do not have nuclei. So they are atypical, not because they have many nuclei, but because they have no nucleus. You see here, they don't have any nucleus. During the red cell, uh, red blood cell formation, the reticulocyte, the precursor, has a nucleus, but then the nucleus is expelled to make room for more hemoglobin. And finally, the flown sieve tube element, which is this type of cell here. It is alive. So it is a cell. It is alive. But it doesn't have a nucleus because it's so specialized in transporting phloem that it doesn't even have a nucleus. Instead, it has a companion cell, this buddy here, that helps it regulate. So you, as an IB student, make sure you have your own companion cell to help you regulate because IB can be a bit overwhelming. So you have here the phloem sieve tube element, and you have the companion cell, and they are BFF, best friends forever.